G'day, I'm Yuki Sandev, and today I will show you how to bake a basic texture on a cube in Blender and import everything into Unity. Alright, so this is part three of the basic Blender to Unity series. In this part, we will be using Blender even more and altering a basic cube slightly and then baking the texture to remove the noise and fit it into the new shape. And then we will import the baked texture along with the cube into Unity. If you haven't completed part two of the series, I would suggest you take a look at the previous videos and the links are at the top of the screen now because in part two, we made a cube mesh and a texture that is going to be used in today's video. If you are continuing the series, then welcome back. And if you're new, then g'day. So let's get going. Alrighty, so I'm going to open up the Blender file that we worked on on part two. Uh, if you remember, we created a cube and we subdivided it into 15 cuts. So you can see all these individual faces now before it was just one whole cube. And then we applied a basic Minecraft diamond texture to it. And then we created two materials, one being the gray parts around the outside and the other being the blue diamondy parts on the inside. So we had two layers. So at this stage, there is a ton of things you could do with this cube. Um, literally thousands of things you could do. But keeping things simple for this tutorial series, just we're going to do a little extruding uh, to make the cube look kind of industrial. Nothing too fancy, but it's just to give you an idea about baking things in Blender. Okay, so with that said, let's just jump straight into this. So we're on the shading screen up here. Click on layer one and then click select. So that's going to give you uh, everything in layer one. It's going to ignore layer two. So that's perfect for what we want. Then come up here and click select and random. Select random. And then just make sure that your action down here is deselect. Uh, if you click select, it's actually going to start selecting boxes from within the other layer as well. We want to go deselect. And then just click and hold this guy here and slide it to deselect a random faces. So we'll just kind of make this a little random, like something like that. So that's 549. Let's round it down. Let's just make it 500. There we go. Uh, at this point, you can now right click and say extrude, whoops, extrude individual faces. And as you move your mouse without even clicking, it starts to extrude them. So you can just basically click and let go. And then it'll give you a menu down here for the amount you want to extrude. That's far too, far too much. Um, let's take that down. So let's come out to about here. Even less. No, let's go. Well, let's set this one to 502, I guess. That's 50. 50 All right, that'll do. And then just uh, click out of it, and there is our new cube with some extruded faces. It looks a little industrial. So you already notice there's noise in here as soon as uh, because those textures have been stretched and it's made a bunch of new faces, and it's not really sure what to do with those faces. If I was to go up here and say render image, it uh, is just going to look weird. So you can see all this noise in here. So this is where baking comes into play. Uh, because the texture no longer fits, it is still applying the old texture. If I go into UV editing here, you can see it's still using the old texture. Nothing's changed. Because the texture down here has not changed, we have to bake it. So that's the next process is to bake the texture. Okay, so texture baking. So we're only going to bake uh, layer one's texture. Layer two doesn't actually have one assigned. It's um, all that's going to be is the blue diamondy bits in the middle. So that's just going to stay the same. We're just going to bake this guy here. That's the one that has all the noise because all those new faces have been applied to this layer. So in order to do that, we need to do some work down here in nodes. So the current output is this guy here and we need to make a new one. So we come up to here and add texture image texture click that and then just put this box over here so this is going to be a new output to replace this one 
Uh, so we need to click new on this guy, give it a name. Uh, let's say baked text. Um, width and height's fine. Everything else I think here can be fine. We just okay on that. Um, we don't have to click close. It's on this. Leave it on linear. It's baking it, so it doesn't really matter what you've got that on. Um, at this point, we can now come over here and begin the baking process. Uh, just make sure that the cube is selected and this output image is selected, not this one, this one here. You can see when you click this one here, you can see the texture over here. When you click this one, there is nothing. After we bake it, there will be something in here. So make sure this one here is selected and that, and then we can start the baking. Right, so moving up this menu here, we can see the picture of the oven. Click on that guy. There's a few things to check and change here. First one is the render engine. Probably yours is going to default to EV. Need to change it to cycles. Uh, the device, uh, I always have mine set to CPU. If you're done doing something huge, then GPU might be a better option for you, depending on what kind of video card you have. But I tend to get away with CPU. Not too bothered about uh, waiting for it. Uh, if we come down to sampling, so this is another thing that you don't really need to worry about at this stage for something like this. Uh, if you were getting to some crazy big renders with uh, very complex models, then you would start playing with this here. Uh, the max samples for this is overkill, but it's uh, not going to take very long to render this anyway, so that's fine. And let's go down to performance. Uh, threads mode, another one that's really not going to matter at this point, but auto detect is always good because I've just used the maximum amount of your CPU that it can. Um, because I think you can tell it how many threads it can use. Yep. So auto detect is good. And then down to bake. So in bake, uh, I think by default it's set to combined. So you want to change that to defuse. And you want to make sure that direct and indirect is deselected. We don't want the lighting. Um, it would make the uh, texture in this case just look horrible. So we just want the color. And that's about it. So we've got uh, just color and diffuse. And this is selected. That's selected. Bake. It's sitting down here baking. And it won't take very long at all. Because this is not a very big thing to bake. Good. And then over the left here now, if we just zoom out with the mouse, you can see that the texture, the original Minecraft block texture has changed to compensate for all these new faces and the corners. Uh, and you can see it's changed a little here. So we have a new texture. So now if we click on this little doobery here and go image, save as, and now we can actually save this as the baked texture. So we'll just save that. And then the, let's also export the FBX. So the original FBX that we started with was just the basic cube, unextruded cube. Now we've got a whole new shape that this texture is suited for. So we need to export the FBX to go into Unity. And let's call it what it says, extruded cube. That sounds good to me, export. Good. So now if we jump in here, we should have everything we need for Unity again. So we've got our extruded cube. We've got the new baked texture that we made for the first layer. And we've got the diamond, original diamond texture. And all we're going to use that for is the blue little diamondy bits that are going to go in here. So that's all we need. So now we can jump into Unity and import this stuff. Okay, so we're back in Unity. Now we are going to grab these blender files that we created and drag them into unity so we'll start with the extruded cube which is the new mesh that we made in unity with the extrusions and we're going to bring our new baked texture in and we're going to bring our original diamond texture in and close that so we've got everything we need click on the extruded cube and extract the materials to the default assets folder we're ready to go. So let's drag this up to the scene to have a look at it. And there's already something, something wrong with it. Let's map the wrong layer here. Yep. So layer one is, it's tried to automatically map. Uh, it'll do that from time to time. So we just click on layer one here and replace it with the layer it should be, which is our new baked texture. And there it is. And then layer two, 
we can put our old diamond texture to give us the blues. And there it is. Now I'll just do what I always do, and that is add a rigid body so that I can make the cubes spin. I always like to see these cubes spin so I can get a better idea of what they really look like. And there we go. So not too bad, very industrial looking. Um, it's, you know, it's plain, but it's, you know, it gives you an idea of what you can, what you can do. Um, this could be improved slightly. Let's click on this cube here and go to layer two, which has got the blues and let's go to emission. And let's change this blue a little. That's actually not too bad, just like that. So all we did was just uh, put a different tint in here to make it look a little more glowy. Yep, that's much better. And that could be even better if we darkened the first layer. So if we go into this guy and drag this all the way up and don't want it too dark, probably about there. Yeah, it's not too bad. Nice. A um, couple of things you can play with here. So these two textures, I don't know if you noticed or not, but I didn't change anything in here. So it's still set to bilinear. It's still set to normal quality. You can play with these things. If Probably if you change the bake text to point no filter, it's probably going to make it very sharp and noisy. Let's see. Yep. So you can see all the noise in here. So we want to set that probably to trilinear. Nice and smooth. Um, other things you can play with is, um, let's see. So that layer originally had the wrong texture map to it, but it actually didn't look that bad. So let's just drag this back up here. Yeah, that actually looks kind of cool. Let's see. Yeah, not too bad. It's just kind of blurred effect. Yeah, so I'll leave it up to you with your artistic cells um, to make these things look whiz -bang. But there's a ton of stuff you can do in Blender with these things. Um, this is just a basic introduction and how to bake them. Um, there's way more levels, of course, than this. Uh, for the next video, I'm not actually too sure what I'm going to do. So I'm open to suggestions uh, for this particular series. It was, um, it's about taking basically anything from Blender into Unity. Um, it was kind of aimed at a beginner level. Um, but if you do have any suggestions or something you would like to see or learn, um, let me know and I'll try to fit it into the series. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.